Okay, let's today talk about a couple of foods and supplements that can increase libido. Libido is a fancy term for sex drive. Now, you should know that the, uh, the thing or the element in the human body that, co- that promotes sex drive in both men and women is testosterone. Now, but the interesting thing is that a lot of these substances that I'm about to discuss, they don't boost testosterone, and yet they seem to have an effect on increasing libido but be, uh, or sex drive. Uh, but because they increase sex drive, a lot of them are included in so-called testosterone supplementing, I'm sorry, testosterone boosting supplements because of the idea that, you know, since testosterone increases sex drive and some of these substances increase sex drive, they must also increase testosterone, which just isn't true. But anyway, I guess in a way you can call these natural aphrodisiacs. Uh, how effective they are, I think, will vary with individuals. But uh, let, let's talk about a couple of them. Uh, for example, tribulus. Tribulus terrestris. It's a small leafy plant. It's been popular in Chinese. I have to pronounce this right. Ayurvedic medicine. That's the, med- that's the traditional medicine of India. Uh, it's always it's been marketed for years as a way to as a supplement to increase testosterone, and this was based, believe it or not, it was based entirely on two things. First was an animal study where you, where they gave tribulus to rams, animals, rams, and it dramatically uh, increased their uh, t- their sex drive and supposedly their testosterone. Uh, then Rom- a couple of Romanian studies. That's one of the uh, native countries where tribulus comes from. A couple of uh, Romanian studies published in obscure medical journals also showed that uh, uh, tribulus could increase testosterone. The mechanism was thought to be tribulus increasing the release of a gonadotropin called luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone is secreted from the anterior pituitary gland in the brain. Luteinizing hormone is the... uh, uh, is basically is what controls testosterone synthesis at the level of the Leydig cells in the testes in men. So anything that increases luteinizing hormone usually increases uh, testosterone. However, when American scientists tested the testosterone-boosting effects of tribulus, uh, they, they found almost no effect whatsoever. Uh, Human studies haven't shown that it could raise testosterone levels, but interestingly enough, it does seem to increase sex drive in people in both men and women. Uh, a 90-day study in women who reported low sexual drive, they took 750 milligrams of tribulus daily for three months, and increased sexual satisfaction to 88 percent and 88 percent of the of the uh, participants. But the study did not include a placebo group, so. It wasn't really what they call a controlled study. Uh, they've given tribulus to men who have erectile dysfunction. Some of the uh, some of the studies show a beneficial effect. Others don't. One study found that taking 800 milligrams of tribulus for 30 days did not treat erectile dysfunction. But another study, the men who took 1,500 milligrams daily for three months, showed improved erections as well as sexual desire. So uh, tribulus is kind of I'd sum it up in this instance by saying it might help a little bit with uh, increased sexual desire or libido, but I think it as a testosterone supplement, it's nothing. It won't do anything. Another one, and I've written about this in Applied Metabolics as well as Tribulus, uh, is the herb ma- maca. Maca is, is actually a root vegetable from South America. It comes in various forms, powders, capsules, liquid extracts. A 12-week study published in 2002 found that 42% of the men who took 1,500 to 3,000 milligrams of maca daily showed increased sex drive. Uh, Maca may act as a natural aphrodisiac to increase sexual desire in men. Uh, It may help to increase, uh, to uh, treat erectile dysfunction, but there's not enough research to suggest that. And there's different types of uh, maca, red maca, black maca, uh, certain forms of red maca are more effective uh, at increasing sexual. I believe it's the red maca that's the most, uh, uh, let's say, uh, potent at increasing uh, sex drive. Uh, and it, it can also uh, help re- uh, reduce the loss of libido 
that occurs when you take certain antidepressant drugs, antidepressant drugs that are known to decrease sex drive. Uh, when they've given maca along with these drugs, the sex drive was restored. Uh, the, the studies have found that taking 1.5 to 3.5 grams daily for at least 2 to 12 weeks was sufficient to boost sex drive. Another one that's uh, that might have a, an effect on libido is red ginseng. Red, red, a review of 10 studies found that red ginseng was effective in improving sexual arousal in women uh, who, who are past menopausal age. In other words, older women. Uh, re, uh, one of the reasons why ginseng might help is that it boosts the production of nitric oxide. Now, this is important because uh, you've heard, of course, the famous drug sildenafil or Viagra. Well, Viagra works by increasing something called cyclic GMP within the erectile tissues, which basically make a long story short without getting into all the chemical conversions. You wind up with a localized increase in nitric oxide production in the erectile tissues uh, uh, of the penis. And what that means, uh, when that happens, the uh, nitric oxide increases the blood flow within the uh, erectile tissues, and it leads to an erection. That's what that's what Viagra does. Contrary to popular opinion or thought, Viagra does not, N-O-T not, it does not increase sex drive or libido. All it does is increase the blood flow, and in, in, in many cases that's enough to uh, give men who have problems getting an erection, you know, men with erectile dysfunction, it helps them to get an erection. Uh, a review of nine studies consisting of, of 600 men with mild to moderate erectile dysfunction found that red ginseng likely improves erectile function or satisfaction of sex compared with a placebo. Uh, so there's not a lot of research, but uh, then you have something called fenugreek. Fenugreek is another popular herb. Uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of the uh, popular testosterone boosters are based on fenugreek because of a couple of small studies that showed that fenugreek could increase testosterone. However, other studies showed that it had uh, no effect. There's a certain compound saponins that are naturally found in fenugreek that are the body supposedly can use to produce sex hormones such as estrogen and testosterone. A 12-week study found that supplementing with 600 milligrams of fenugreek extract improved sexual function and increased testosterone levels in 120 middle-aged and older men. Uh, but whether that increase in testosterone was clinically significant is up in the air. It, it's not... Uh, it's not really for certain. An eight-week an eight week study in 80 women with low sex drive determined that taking 600 milligrams of fenugreek significantly improved sexual arousal and desire compared with a placebo. Uh, but um, again, there's not a lot of studies. I, uh, I've seen a couple of studies showing that fenugreek uh, had no effect whatsoever on testosterone. So I wouldn't depend on it as a testosterone booster. Saffron, saffron is another spice. It's a spice. It comes from the crocus flower. Uh, it, it's it's a very good, by the way, for uh, inducing sleep. A lot of people don't know that natural saffron helps you to fall asleep. Uh, it reduces stress, uh, and uh, it also seems to have. Uh, uh, it, it also can reduce the sexual dysfunction caused by antidepressants. Uh, a review of six studies reported that saffron improved erectile function, sexual desire, and satisfaction in men. But these things, these the study had significant flaws, which cast doubt on the uh, on the conclusions of the study. Another review of five studies of 173 people found that saffron significantly improved various aspects of sexual pleasure, desire, and arousal. But again, the results varied significantly. Uh, so, ginkgo biloba. Uh, ginkgo biloba is a popular herbal supplement. Uh, it, uh, it, it also increases nitric oxide production. A lot of people don't know that. Ginkgo, uh, ginkgo biloba increases blood circulation. Of course, blood circulation has a huge uh, effect or is heavily involved in the production of, of uh, an erection in male. Uh, and, uh, you know, so in that way, ginkgo might help with uh, uh, sexual performance, I guess you could call it. Uh, when it's combined with uh, other substances that are known to affect uh, sexual function, such as arginine, which is a direct precursor for nitric oxide uh, synthesis, zinc, which is involved in testosterone synthesis, 
and tribolus, uh, when you throw the, the, all of them in with ginkgo, it seems to improve libido and sexual function in most people. Another one possibility uh, for increasing uh, sexual desire is citrulline. Citrulline uh, is produ produced in the body. It's a non-essential amino acid, particularly high in watermelon. Uh, in fact, the word citrulline, I believe, comes from uh, a Latin term for watermelon, something like that. Uh, it, uh, citrulline is a basically, you could call it an improved form of arginine because o about 60% of the arginine that you ingest orally is broken down in the gut by an enzyme called arginase. But when you take citrulline, it bypasses the arginase barrier and it's in the kidneys, it's converted back into arginine and then it enters the blood. And, when, and as arginine, it can be converted right into nitric oxide. And in that situation, it can help to treat erectile dysfunction and help with sexual function. A small 200, a 2011 study of 24 men with mild erectile dysfunction uh, found that taking 1.5 grams of citrulline significantly improved symptoms in 50% of the participants after one month. Uh, another 30-day study of men taking a combination of 800 milligrams of L-citrulline and 300 milligrams of transverse veritrol uh, showed improved erectile function and hardness. Uh, also, I've seen some recent studies showing that if you use a standard uh, drug such as Viagra, if you take it with citrulline, you get much better results than taking the uh, Viagra alone. In fact, some men who've used Viagra alone where it hasn't worked that well for them, if they start taking uh, citrulline with it, suddenly the Viagra works very well. However, the doses that I just mentioned here aren't going to do diddly squat. For that purpose, you'd have to take larger doses of citrulline, at least six to eight grams uh, a, a day uh, for it to have a real effect if you take it with something like um, uh, Viagra. So uh, I'd also mention Tonget Ali. Tonget Ali, also known as Long Jack, which is a, uh, a type of herb found mainly from, grown mainly in Malaysia and Asian countries. Uh, it's uh, it's one of the few actual natural herbal uh, supplements that actually can raise testosterone levels. And it can do it pretty effectively. When I wrote an article in my Applied Metabolics newsletter about herbal testosterone boosters, I, I kind of uh, mentioned that, uh, that Tonget Ali was the only uh, effective herbal testosterone booster in the sense that it's the only one that had several studies showing that it does raise testosterone. Uh, whether it raises testosterone enough to affect muscle building is questionable, but it raises testosterone enough where it could uh, help to increase libido and possibly sexual performance. So um, let me see. I think that's about it for uh, these. Uh, of course, you have the natural foods that foods that are rich in zinc. As I mentioned earlier, zinc is involved in the production of testosterone. And uh, if you're deficient in zinc, you're going to have a uh, lower production of testosterone, which means a lower libido. Uh, if you consume foods that are rich in zinc, such as meat, oysters, uh, certain types of fish, uh, that could also uh, uh, help your libido, especially if you're not ingesting uh, enough zinc from other foods or if you're deficient in zinc. So that's about it for this topic. Uh, if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, supplement science, which ones work, which ones don't, anti-aging research, uh, effective fat loss techniques, uh, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, uh, you know, women's health and fitness, many other topics. Nobody covers as many topics as I do in my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, 40 to 50 pages every month, no ads, solid evidence-based information, including my 60 years of, of empirical knowledge, meaning stuff I learned in the real world that you can't really be taught in any type of academic institution. So, uh, so subscribe today. When you subscribe, I will send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise science, general medicine, and health. Uh, I also have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics website where current subscribers only, I don't ex accept unsolicited questions, can ask me short questions about anything they might have read in Applied Metabolics or any other questions that come to mind. I will answer these questions because as a service 
and appreciation of the fact that they are subscribers to my Applied Metabolics. Of course, this means that if you're not a subscriber, uh, you'll be whistling in the wind, so to speak, because I'm not going to answer you. You know, this is I look at this as a bonus to my subscribers. Uh, as far as these videos, you're welcome to leave uh, comments about possible future topics. If I feel that the uh, topic that you're um, uh, asking me about will interest a large number of people, I'll try and do a video on it. Uh, and also, as people know, you also you might want to subscribe to this channel, uh, my channel here, because every I put on new, new videos every week, usually on Tuesdays. There's a new video every week. I cover a broad range of topics. Uh, there's no dancing girls. There's no fancy uh, graphics. Uh, there's not, it's just the basic truth. That's about it. But the good news is that everything I tell you is the solid 100% truth. I'm not trying to sell you anything here other than my newsletter. You know, I mention it, but uh, I'm not trying to sell you any supplements. I'm not involved in any supplement company. Uh, I think I think that this is probably one of the only channels on the entire YouTube where you're going to get 100% truth with no BS, no attempt to uh, you know to you know to kind of like steer you to a website where you're going to have to pay a huge amounts of money to get real information. That's a trick they a lot of people use. They put they put out these informational YouTube videos that really give, tell you nothing, but they're like teasers. And at the end of the video, they tell you to go to their, you know, join their website where you'll get the whole story, the full information. You know, I, I don't do that. My my applied metabolics is not expensive at all. It costs less than buying a, a you know, one of these lattes at at uh, Starbucks. It's it's not expensive at all. I haven't even I haven't raised my price since I started the newsletter. Even though everything, as you know. Everything has gone up in price. I've kept the same price. It's probably the best bargain you'll ever find uh, as far as informational sources on the entire internet, if I say so myself. So check it out. Subscribe today, www.appliedmetabolics.com. If you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. Take